Today, MTD CNC are at Key Gas Aero Components in Warwick, not only a manufacturer of aerospace parts, but also automotive components. If you'd have watched our channel over recent years, you'd have seen we've done lots of work looking at Huachon machine tools around not only the UK, but also Europe as well. Today is the opportunity to talk to a company who's just purchased one, and not just any Huachon machine. Look at this machine here, the Hitec 850L YMC. It's a huge turning center. Peter, we travel to the home of Huachon in the UK, Ward High Tech in Sheffield, quite a lot. Uh, you must have been there uh, whilst you were embarking on this purchase. What impressed you about their business? Uh, essentially, when we had a look at it, the uh, competitive nature of the product was very good. Um, the delivery of the product compared to some other in the UK uh, was good and machines were looked outside the UK. Um, and they seem to have a lot of knowledge and a lot of support of the product in the UK and that for us was very important. And because you've got experience of purchasing Korean machines previously here at Keygas, how does this compare technically to some of the other machine tools that you have on site? We looked at the technical capabilities of this product compared to the others in the UK and we didn't see a substantial difference for the product that we were doing on this machine. Uh, and therefore, in terms of a technical assessment of the machine, we were quite happy with it. Um, so it was then down to a delivery and could we get the product we needed to do our job within the constraints of the contract that we have. And that's really where the decision came once we'd okayed the technical nature of the product. Uh, this is your biggest machine that you have here when it comes to turning on site here at Keygas. It is some machine, I mean it's huge. Uh, you've got a, a, a huge turret on here, a, a massive turning length. Tell us about those features, tell us the turning diameter, what you can fit on this machine. Okay, yes the contract we have taken has needed us to take that diameter up. Currently we can turn up to 600 millimeter diameters um, strategically for the business um, this was on a new engine and an engine for the future, so it's strategically very important that we took this contract. But I needed to take that turning capacity up on this product to just under 900 millimetres. So this machine that we have here will take us up to 950 millimetres, so it's above the maximum turn in the size that I needed. Um, what we've also done in making this investment is a bit of future proofing really. I don't need it for this particular contract, but it has a Y-axis capability, so that if we're doing shafts or other turn, large turned work uh, where we need keyways or hexagon flats or holes here off centre, then it will give us the capability to do that. And it, we've also got a, a, a size capability in terms of length of shaft or length of component we're turning that will take us up to real turning up to around two and a half meters in length. Um, and those are the key features of the machine. So 950 diameter, two and a half meters in length and the Y axis as well as the milling capacity. So that four axis machine we felt was right for the type of contracts we'd be looking for on this machine. It's fair to say that the component that you're machining on here, albeit it's still quite a large part, is actually fairly insignificant to the capabilities of this machine, isn't it, as well? Also, not to the, just the size of it, but what you're actually doing, because you're not actually uh, cutting in anger with this particular product either, are you? Well, we're not cutting in anger, but we needed the size. Once you need the diameter, it doesn't matter which manufacturer you look at, slideways are bigger, the tooling's bigger, so you're into that size because of the diameter. And yes, the component we're manufacturing doesn't need big heavy cuts. In fact, if you put big heavy cuts on this, you'd get in real trouble. We've got a titanium forged ring. Titanium is, it's not the easiest material to uh, manufacture with. It work hardens as you're manufacturing it. If you try to hit it very hard, all you're gonna do is break tips or you're gonna wear tips out very quickly and you need to get some tip life because you need a cut length to be able to do what you need to do. So yes, it looks a beast of a machine, for what we're doing, they're quite thin pots, they're very light pots being titanium, but it's complicated machining and as I say, once you're looking for that capability of diameter, 
all of the machine, they're beasts, which is what you just called this. Yes, they are. And I think Huachon have taken it to the nth degree. I mean, let's let's talk about the turret, for example, here. I mean, the, the, the width of the turret is almost twice as wide as what I would see on some of the competitors' machines, which will enable you, if you venture into, into different types of work, to be able to uh, maybe take bigger cuts because you'll have more of a stable and a solid mount for your tools. Yeah, well, in terms of the, the length of the turret, certainly when you're talking about large boring bars where you're going inside products, then that gives you far more stability. Um, chatter in tooling is one of those big things, particularly taking big cuts, so it gives you more stability from that point of view. And also, the spread around the turret. I mean, we do have jobs in other areas of the business where you might have a, a 24 tool station or a 12 turret position turret, but because the tooling you're using it, you have to miss the odd turrets out. So spreading those tools out around the turret, particularly when you're talking large tools like this, large boring bars, it means you can use all of the turret positions, you're not having to lose things out, and all of a sudden you turn a, a, a 10 position turret into a five position turret. So it has its benefits. And in addition to that, like we mentioned already, you look at the base of this machine, huge box guideway construction to dampen out some of that vibration on those heavier cuts. Um, let's look at that, let's talk about the future. Yeah, you're doing this component at the moment, but this machine surely for Key Gas Aero opens up many more opportunities for you. Well, it doesn't strategically, that's what we, what we are trying to do. We at Key Gas, we've been here since the 1920s, been in the aerospace business since the late 30s, and we've worked on all of the engines, all of the engines through that period. But those older engines where we had a lot of work, they're coming to the end of their useful life. Um, the various uh, manufacturers of engines are replacing them with a whole new fleet of engines. And what we need to do is move forward with those engine, uh, those engine um, profiles, because uh, if we don't, then we won't have a business. So this is taking on a new contract for a new engine going forward into the future. So we needed the machine to do it. But this machine was only going to be about 40% capacity with this particular product. So if I can't gain more work in the aerospace industry, the fact that we've got the extra length of, um, of machines such that we can do long shafts, it allows other opportunities in oil and gas or maybe the rail industry. And that's why we went for the Y-axis as well, so that it doesn't limit us. We didn't just look at this component in manufacturing. We looked at what is the best strategically for the business to future-proof the business and give us other opportunities in the marketplace. And I think that that is exactly where this machine fits in, in, in Ward High Tech's portfolio as well. I know when they're promoting it, uh, engineers look at this and think they can future-proof themselves to give themselves and make them different maybe from their competition. Uh, from the operator's perspective here, how have they got to grips with this new brand of machine tool? Because it is the first you've purchased from Ward High Tech. Accessibility, control, operating, all good? Uh, well, the key from that point of view is the majority of machines we have, we have some Siemens control, but majority is Fanuc. And we specified that what we wanted was Fanuc on this machine. So having a Fanuc machine control, and all the guys have been trained on it, that gets over one of the big hurdles, the, the human interface to the machine being Fanuc. The fact that it is essentially, and we do have other Y-axis machines in the business, we have two other Y-axis machines, the guys are used to using Y-axis machines. So once they've got over the shock and awe as it comes in through the door and you see this enormous machine, once they've got over that, then it's, yes, okay, we've done this before. So the training requirement in terms of the staff, because they've already got the FANUC experience, they've always got, already got the Y-axis and the, uh, the milling capability, C-axis capability of the machines we have in the factory, in all honesty, it's been quite an easy transition for them. It's just getting over that size. Uh, they could hide in there, couldn't they? They certainly could, but they won't be. <laughs> when you've been to Ward High Tech, this isn't obviously the only Huachon machine in the range. Were you quite impressed with the, the, the breadth of what they offer there? Uh, it did take me a little bit by surprise, I've got to be honest. Huachon are not somebody that we have looked at previously. Um, but when you get into this range of machine, they are one of the people who are up there with, with all these size of machines. But then what we also see when we get there is obviously the smaller offerings that you can get with lathes uh, and with their machining centers. So uh, it was something we weren't aware of at the time, but we now are. Um, so it's something we will look for for the future, particularly if we get good success with this. And there's the key which I'm sure you will. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, thank you, Paul.